In this video, we're going to look at the difference between VMs and containers. And you know that this is the overall architecture. So you install an operating system, that's your hypervisor, and it runs multiple VMs. But you pay a performance premium here because you have one kernel here, another one here, and another one here giving you three separate kernels. And by kernel, I'm referring to this distinction between this kernel mode and user mode, where the kernel runs the operating system, and then the user mode are the applications that you're running. Now, we're looking at Windows here, but this uh, diagram essentially applies to Linux too. And here, you can see that with the Linux kernel. Now, once we start talking about containers, things change. First of all, we reduce the kernel down to one. And you can see that here. And here you could load different operating systems. You could have Windows here and Linux here. But with containers, you always have the same host, the same kernel, and you always boot into the same OS. You just have a bunch of processes on the host. Now specifically, those processes run inside a container. So what is a container? The container actually holds C groups, namespaces, and UFS or union capable file systems. Most of the time, a container actually seems like and acts like a particular operating system. And that would be a Linux operating system, although there is some variation. A namespace provides isolation and it limits what you can see and then what you can use, whereas a C group will limit how much you can use. Take a look at these two definitions. C groups provide metering and limiting, as well as access control. Namespaces, again, provide processes with their own view of the system. So there's a separate namespace for PIDs, so the process identifiers for net, mount, UTS, IPC. And this is important, each process is in one namespace of each type. So in the case of PIDs, those processes can only see processes in the same PID namespace. So we'll take a look at this example. We have a resource, CPU, and a node, which is a group of processes. Here we're looking at batch, but it could be real time or it could be memory. And then you have your namespaces and the processes inside those namespaces. So notice that Hadoop's 109 and 88 PIDs have no ability to see Bitcoin's 52. They are isolated through namespaces. And notice that their access to resources, in this case CPU, but it could also be memory or others, is being limited by, controlled by, C groups. So that takes us through C groups and namespaces, but for UFS, we need to look at the union capable file system, which is a way of combining multiple directories into one. So for example, if you have a CD-ROM, which is obviously not writable, you can combine it with another directory and provide what appears to be or the illusion of writing to a unified single directory. Now, this is related to a container. And in the world of Docker, it looks like this with our kernel, C groups, namespaces. And then we have something called an image, which really provides the operating system as the kernel sort of sees it. These all come in what are called layers. They're all read only layers until the top layer, which is in fact writable. This is known as copy on write, which is described in more detail here. Now, because we're not emulating anymore in the container world, you get what's called a lighter environment that can in fact run more hosts than this environment would be able to do. And by hosts, I'm really talking about containers because of the image we just saw a few seconds ago. This sort of architecture is sometimes known as microservices because you'll have one container here and another here and another here, and they'll all talk to each other, all of them doing small sorts of tasks that get built together into a large application. Although more formally, microservices is really a variation of service-oriented architecture. And for more details about that, you can take a look at this video here. Later, when we look at Kubernetes, you'll see that there's a concept called a pod. And having looked at this video, you'll know that a pod is actually a Kubernetes-managed container with its C groups, its namespaces, and UFS.